This week's Safety Toolbox Talk is on our insurance group's life-saving commitments. The American Contractors Insurance Group has notified us throughout the years, and they've actually even given us small icons to accompany their 12 primary concerns. Within our captive of 40 contractors, these 12 elements have been the most significant that could cause and have caused injuries within our nucleus of our insurance group. They begin with performing atmospheric testing. That would also include obtain authorization before entering a confined space. How much confined space work do we do? That could be a vaulted sidewalk, it could be a basin, it could be a roof area, confined spaces. We send these out individually throughout the year. Today I'm covering all 12. Confined spaces, they can kill us. Verify isolation from hazardous energy. Am I working on a live steam pipe, a water pipe, somehow penetrate a coupling that comes back and clips me in the face and I be, turn out to be a fatality. Energized sources, electricity, working on live open panels, understanding the hazards associated with energies and how it can harm you. Protecting yourself against crushing and caught in between objects. Moving a car to drywall down a corridor it falls over on an individual, caught between, crushed by, vehicular traffic, working along the highways, construction traffic on the job sites and equipments, lulls, backhoes, bombers backing up and coming through site fences, working with tools in particular areas and having someone around you using a piece of equipment that may capture you up against a stationary object. This is actually the number two killer in the construction industry. Protecting yourself from falls continues to be the number one hazard in the construction industry is falls. Can I engineer out the fall exposure by putting up guardrails, putting up safety nets, or do I need to be tied off? Because I need to do something when I have a fall exposure from a higher height of six feet or greater. Do not walk under suspended loads, walking underneath the crane, walking underneath a lull, maybe, maybe loading up a beta hoist and having them lifting that up and I'm standing underneath that load. It's called falling object protection, being aware of these loads over your head. These are continuing to hurt and injure tradesmen out there. No alcoholic, no alcohol and drugs while working or driving should be common sense but it's still happening out there protect and properly secure all loads and materials maybe up on a roof you're protecting those loads and materials maybe in transit from our shop to a job site or vice versa from a job site back to our shop securing loads and do not enter a unprotected trench or excavation an excavation five feet or deeper in, in, in depth can kill you. What are the requirements? What are the protective means and measures? Excavations are the fourth leading killer in the construction industry. It talks about overhead power lines. Do you know the dangers associated with overhead power lines? Do you know that typically we're supposed to be 10 feet away from an overhead power line? But with cranes, we're supposed to be 20 feet from an overhead power line because they have a tendency to arc, flash us, and electrify us and kill us. Overhead power lines are very, very dangerous and should be not noticed on a logistics plan in a pre-construction safety meeting prior to even mobilizing a job site. We should understand that we're going to have an overhead power line issue on that project. And then last but not least, be aware of the safe practices required to protect you and your coworkers from potential hazards associated with working in the proximity of mobile equipments. Whether it's a dump truck or any other type of equipment on a project, a subcontractor or us, 
there's plenty of hazards associated with the 12 I've just mentioned. Let's cover these this week out in the field with our crews. Let's have a safe week. Thank you.